Hey everyone, Retire on Dividends here, back to make another update to the series Yield Max Weekly Changes. So, for those of you new to this whole series, uh, the whole point of this is to look at Yield Max from a different light. And the light that we're looking at is we're going straight to the underlying stock that they trade on and we're tracking the change in that stock week over week. So we take the price as of the close on the previous Friday and we compare it to the close of the next Friday. And we compare every single Friday to Friday um, you know, for the poll that we're doing. And I started this poll January 6th of 2023 and I'm going down obviously all the way to the current date. As of today, um, obviously, it, it's it's not Friday right now, but it's Tuesday, October 29th. So this would have pulled, if I go all the way down here, the Friday before um, that, 1025 would be the latest Friday that we're pulling, 1025-24. So who I have up first is SMCY. This is a yield max fund that trades SMCI. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the tabs for each first. And I highlighted any changes that are greater than 10%, you know, upwards or lower than 10%. So the 10% lower is in pink and then the 10% greater is in green. And then later on, and as you see on columns F, G, and H, we're going to take a look at all of the days where it went over and under 5%. 5% is really the rule that we should use. Because it's typically, a, I'll say, maybe around the out-of-the-money calls that, you know, how far they go out. Sometimes they go tighter. Sometimes they go further out, depending on the implied volatility of the fund. But 5% is kind of the safe haven, right? Later on, when we finish all of these funds, we can, of course, change the percentage for each fund and go from there. But for now, we're going to look at everything comparably on a 5% basis. So... Here's SMCY. Right off the bat, look at the first, you know, the second weekend, right? Down 10%. And then you see a green up 13%. So the problem, all right, going down 10%, there's nothing we could do. We actually beat the underlying um, on the downward on that, or at least we should, because we're collecting premium on the downward. Now, the problem here, when it jumps up 13%, we're going to be capped, right? Assuming we're selling covered calls less than 13% out of the money, we're going to get capped on that. And here's another one, 16%, 30%. So obviously, yeah, we want those gains. 22%, 33%, 17%, down 11, up 15, up 13, 10, 24. So SMCI clearly is a very volatile stock and the price fluctuations are insane. So looking at this, um, I always say I want to get into SMCY, and I'm looking at this, and I'm like, oh, man, I am not so sure. Although I am also not sure how far out of the money they go each week, they do have a high IV rate, so they probably go a little further than 5%. Hopefully, hopefully. If they do call credit spreads, they may not. Uh, but, yeah, this is uh, quite the fund, quite the fluctuation. The 5%, obviously, we'll check that on a later tab. Next up is YBIT. So their underlying is BITO. Still don't know why uh, it's BITO because BITO has a massive dividend. I wish they would just own the underlying. Anyway, BITO, if you look here, up 16%, up 14%, up 14, down 10, down 35, down 10, down 11, up 17, down 11, up 10, up 13, up 14, up 10. So BITO has a lot of movement, clearly has a lot of movement. This is another high risk, high reward product here. Uh, I'm not a fan of YBIT. In fact, it hasn't performed great at all. And I'm assuming the numbers when we get to the end will reflect that. Let's take a look at DISO. How many times have they gone up under 10% or over 10% on a weekly basis? Well, if we scroll through, I saw one. Only one time they went above 11%. So this is solid. This is what works for a covered call fund. I know a lot of people are not fans of DISO, but the underlying Disney does not move much. It's safe. Hopefully the IV, you know, justifies investing in it, right? Last I checked, it did not though. 
All right, here's OARC. OARC launched when Tesla launched. It has not performed well, but neither has Tesla, right? So o here's OARC. Their underlying is ARK, A-R-K-K. -K. Up 14, up 10, down 10, up 11, up 18. So not nothing too crazy. Another 10 right there. So, you know, I, I expected much, much worse. And then number five, um, by the way, guys, I picked these funds based on the top comments. I don't think I got enough comments to fill the funds. I think I picked the last two, uh, but someone did mention SMCY, YBIT, and DISO. So that's how I got the funds. But eventually we're going to go through all of them anyway. All right, TSMY is next. Their underlying is TSM. First week they're up 11, then they have an up 10, up 11. Uh, yeah, they're not as bad. They're kind of average overall. But again, um, let's go to the compare tab and get to the fun part. So here we are, SMCY um, is the first one. Obviously, the underlying is SMCI. Their implied volatility is 90%. So they're, they went under 5% 24 times and went over 5% 35 times. And that's for 94 weeks. So overall, they went over or under 5% 62% of the time. That is pretty damn high. But again, they got 90% IV. Now, if we take a look at BITO for YBIT, their IV is 58%. That's not bad. Now, they went under 5% uh, 17 times. They went over 5% 21 times. That's a 40% rate of, of, you know, again, 40% of the weeks in 94 weeks. That's less than SMCI. However, their IV is not as high. All right, here's D Disney uh, for T DISO. Only... a Total of 11 times, 5%, both ways. So only 11.7% of the time they went over or under 5%, 5 um, which is really good for 94 weeks. Their IV is 38%. That's not terrible. All right, here's ARC for OARC. Um, overall, 32% of the time they went over or under 5% in 94 weeks. That's okay. Uh, their IV is not that great, 35%. Wait, did, oh my God. Disney's IV is higher than ARC currently. Disney must have earnings. Maybe. I don't know. All right, here's uh, TSM for TSMY. T only 27% of the time? Wow, that's impressive. Over a 94-week span, 27% of the time, they went over or under 5%. Their IV is 40%, so that's okay, I guess. But in the end, what do we do? We go to the summary tab. We give them grades here, okay? Extra, what is that extra credit column? We gotta make that bigger. There you go. So what do we do here? Let's take a look. So I got the five, the new five here. We start on SMCY, and I grade them. Okay. I compare the total times they went above the five percent, right? And I compare that with their IV, and then I calculate a grade. Again, this is just, you know, does this mean anything? <laughs> I mean. To me, it does. You guys can take it and do what you want with it. But it, again, this is just my methodology of the grade. So if you look at the grade formula, if you're curious, we're taking I-17, which is the total 5%, you know, total weeks, it went over 5% percentage, 62% in this example, and divide that by J-17, which is their 30-day IV. Because obviously, you do not want... The 60, you do not want the beats to be greater than the IV. And it's not, right? It's not um, in any of these, any of these five. So obviously the lower, you know, once you divide that in, the lower, the better. But then that's why I divide 100% minus, I do 100% minus that number. And then the higher the grade here, the better, okay? So 31% grade for SMCY. The extra credit grade takes just the over because again the over is what's important because they get capped so 31 percent overall grade 59 percent just the over not fantastic bit uh y bit 31 percent grade 62 percent on the over again not not great um 62 percent on the over is pretty good though here's this so 70 percent on a grade see the shade of green that's dark that means it's doing very well comparably to the others 83 percent on the over that's really really good so that means they don't they do not get capped very often now here's oarc their grade is eight percent that is god awful so that is why the fund is not performing that well uh because you know their implied volatility is very very 
you know, unappreciative, <laughs> you know, it should be higher based on the total 5% fluctuations. Uh, also keep in mind, though, the 30 day IV, you know, that is just the last 30 days. It's not over, you know, it's not since January 6, 23. It's not taking the average since then. In fact, I don't have a formula for that. I only have the formula for the 30 day IV, which is the most current IV. So that's what we're using. All right, so yeah, their overall grade was 8%. The over grade was 47%, so that's not that great either. Last but not least, TSMY. Their grade was at 31%, which cut kind of in line with the others. It's uh, it's weird that... This is formula, right? I and J21, yeah. So strange that they three of the five had a 31% grade, which is not good. But, uh, you know, these, these are not a good selection of five. Their uh, overgrade is 55%, and that's not really that great either. So of the recent five we chose, DISO is the best. Who would have thought? But what makes them the best? They're basically comparing the IV versus how many times they went over or under 5%. Now, if we go back and see, who else were the good ones? Well, 52% for Apley. That was okay. It's a decent grade. Uh, again, they had 68% for the over, which is really good. So Disso beat Apley. Um, Disso beat PP, 53% overall grade for PP. But Disso did not beat um, MSFO. Who else did it not beat? Wow, it only... Disso is number two. So MSFO is still number one, 75% overall grade, 79% extra credit. Disso number two, 70% grade, 83% extra credit so their 83 percent extra credit is actually number one right now so that's pretty impressive so disso number two behind msfo who's number three they got a lot of 50 percent is 57 percent number three yeah so uh amzy's number three at 57 percent and next is pp at 53 percent and then aptly at 52 percent so what i'm going to do from here on well, I got two more videos, so if I go down here, you guys let me know of these eight that are left, right? I think there's eight, right? Two, four, six, no, seven. Seven left? Two, four, six. Oh, there's seven left. All right, I'll just, yeah, I'll do all seven in one video, unless I'm missing one, just confirm. But I'll do, my next video, I'll cover the last seven. That'll be a pain in the ass to do seven, but I'll do all seven, and then I'll do what... What I'll do is I'll take this and I'll give it official rankings and I'll sort it by rankings. And then from there on out, I'll make this video once a month and we will see how the rankings are going once per month um, to see which one, you, you know, tends to be the best option based on, you know, the, the fluctuation uh, in the underlying price. So again, guys, what this is, is just a different way to look at things because again, they sell weekly calls. So if they're selling weekly calls and they're going out of the money, like typically around 5%, we kind of want to know how often this underlying goes above or below 5%, right? I mean, I mean, you should. So that's why I'm kind of sharing this information with you. It's just the thought I had. Um, and it could, like I said, an ongoing maybe once a month. If you guys see, think that's needed, I'll do it once a month. All right, guys. As always, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. So hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you're entertained. If not, we will try again on the next one. By the way, look at the increase of SMCI. 482% since January 6th of 23. That's amazing. I mean, I, you can't compete with MSTR, Coin, or NVIDIA, or Palantir, but <laughs> I mean, some of these, man, you see, like, they jumped up so high. So, obviously, you know, some of the fluctuations are on the upward, which is really good. But, again, you don't want to be capped, man. You don't want to be freaking capped. All right, guys, if you enjoy this content, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button. It does go a long way. If you have any questions or concerns, leave them down in the comments below. All right, let me upload this. I'll launch it around 3 p.m. today. That's the typical time. And like I said, the next video, I'll add the rest of the funds. And what we'll do is this final summary will be the true rankings. And then we'll take a look at all the data and see how it compares. All right. Um, yeah, that's all I got for today. Thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you later.